Well, hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Thanks for being here. I'm excited about this project. This is uh, this is the first large billet of 52100 and of course 15 and 20 steel that I've done. I have done a small billet of 52100 uh, pattern welded or Damascus steel before, with good results. That was quite a while, that was a while back before I really started using 52100 a lot more and kind of understanding it better. So now that I've kind of I guess in some ways come full circle here, I want to go ahead and forge a 52100 uh, pattern welded steel blade. First order of business, of course, is to clean off all the mill scale and in, in some cases rust off of the steel that I'm using. And uh, I was able to get enough layers together here that I only have to cut and restack and reweld one time to get my 200 plus layer count. So get these all uh, cleaned up and uh, all the dust blown off here. We'll, we'll set up our stack here. Now I did something that I haven't done before and that is I threw in a couple of pieces of quarter inch thick stock and that should uh, provide some interesting variation to the pattern without any additional manipulation since we've got different the different thicknesses there we don't have to do anything it's just built in so kind of interested to see what that's going to look like obviously i've got some different thicknesses or excuse me different widths of uh stock on this on this billet here and i'll be uh i'll be grinding those off shortly after completing the forge weld so that we don't end up with nasty cold shuts and other problems like that The goal here is to simply hold these pieces all together and this arc weld bead is going to be gone and uh, not an issue as far as blade steel is concerned. So like I mentioned, typically I'll be using 1095 and 15 and 20 for my, my Damascus billets. I went ahead and soaked the billet down with WD-40 to provide some uh, carbon deposit when that burns off in between the layers if possible. Uh, I, I usually dip it in diesel and soak it in diesel. Um, you know, I, I wanted to keep this billet as clean as possible. I think I need to get some more diesel. It's kind of uh, getting dirty. But try to get some uh, borax on here as quickly as possible in the initial heat up here to uh, prevent any scale from forming. Once that billet is uh, protected with that molten layer of borax then you can let it heat up in there. So this is just to pack the billet. We are not we're not really anywhere close to welding heat or obviously an even heat throughout the billet yet. I just want to pack those layers together as tight as possible and uh, minimize any potential surface area between the layers that's exposed to oxygen or atmosphere. So this is the initial weld here. Everything, uh, everything looks, looks pretty good at this point. It's really better to start with uh, pieces that are the same size and width, but I had a few odds and ends that I wanted to throw in here and use up, so instead of taking the time to cut them down, I just figured I'd grind them off after the fact, so. Go ahead and start uh, drawing this billet out here and uh, immediately run into a problem. You can see that it's opening up down there. Those are some pretty hefty cracks or openings on the billet. So I quickly got some um, borax in there 
and then put it back in the forge because borax needs heat to do its thing, to do what it does, which is clean the steel. So you kind of have to leave those cracks open, <clears throat> make sure that borax gets in there, and then go ahead and you know squish it out from the the backside as you close that. Hopefully, close that weld up, and everything seemed to go seemed to go fine on there. Um, it actually does resurface, unfortunately, a little later on. So I'll talk about that briefly here. Um, you know what 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 happened here, and and as I've said before in previous videos and projects, anytime you change one like one ingredient or one aspect of a particular process, it it has a, it has the potential to throw everything off following that. And I figured you know figured out what I did. So here's here's our uh, billet drawn out for the first uh, first. Uh, layer and this is uh, what uh, I guess 35 layers well 37 but we're gonna not count the uh, outside same layer so 35 I can cut that up into six pieces and get my little bit over 200 layer count which is what I'm after so what I did here that I haven't done before is I added those quarter inch thick pieces of 52 100 and you know if you've done much Damascus or pattern welder before, you know just how how much the heat does not transfer from piece to piece un unless it's actually welded. And that's one way that you can um, that's one way that you can ascertain whether or not you have a solid weld throughout your piece. Like if you have um, you know a piece of if you have your billet and there's uh, sides or sections of it that are heating up or cooling down at a different rate than the rest of it that can be an indication that you don't have all other things being equal that can be an indication that you don't have a solid weld so even though that steel is right up against the other piece of steel it's amazing how much heat actually doesn't transfer so um, all that to say I really think what happened there is my quarter inch stock was not quite up to heat. Um, you know, and I've never had that issue before because everything else has been the same thickness, so everything's coming up to heat individually at the same rate, but not in this case. So that was interesting. Um, and I could have avoided it simply by letting it soak a little longer, but uh, I'm always kind of trying to be conscious of not leaving this deal in the forge any longer than possible or any longer than necessary you know keep you know we don't the less time in the forge the less time at, at forging heat um, forge welding heat and forging heat the better so you know it's it's a fine line sometimes I guess because you have to be able to complete that weld so here we are we're up to uh, we're up to our 200 plus layer count now and we've got the billet drawn out so now we can begin to actually forge a knife so into the forge we go after letting the uh, the billet the bar cool down here and uh, it's time to uh, get the old little giant actually it says new on on the flywheel right there if you'll notice that it says new get the new <laughs> it's kind of funny because it's what over 100 well about 100 years old so anyway, to, trying to get the old new little giant going here, and, and these things run on grease, you know, oil, as it were. So make sure everything's well lubricated and get it ready to roll here. This is the older style, if you're familiar with the little giant, and it has the uh, like those cross members that I'm lubricating right there, kind of they're forged instead of cast. The newer ones are cast, I believe. So I started going to go and forge in the uh, the tip of the blade here, and I started running into our D lamb again, and I ended up cutting off um, I think two or three sections about an inch long. Uh, by the time I finally kind of got to where it wasn't being a problem anymore which was really a bummer and here I am I've got I still got a little bit of an issue and I'm grinding down so grinding away some of my layers and I'm really not happy about that the pattern's still gonna look good you don't actually see all the layers anyway in the finished product but that was really a bummer look at how short the billet is now and man yeah it's just you change one little thing 
and uh, I mean, I, I should have known better. You know, I, I, I thought I was up to welding heat on everything, but hey, live and learn. So word to the wise, let us soak a little longer next time. So we're forging in the uh, tip of the blade a little bit here. Still have plenty of thickness. I don't know, we're probably about three eighths a little, or, or a little more. I'm gonna go ahead and put in uh, a little bit of a ladder pattern here. It's one of my, it's really my favorite pattern. Now, this is not a super elaborate pattern. This isn't your mosaic and this and that, but my goal here is to make a useful, serviceable, and beautiful knife, and this will serve that purpose quite well. So you can see the grooves that I've ground in there, and I'm just doing a little shaping on the tip here before we go ahead and forge the, uh, the blade out here. And what that's going to do is um, we've, we've ground those grooves in there and revealed the, the strata, if you will, of those layers that we forged together. So now hammering it out flat like this is going to render that 3D um, groove in a 2D pattern. So kind of kind of cool. All right, so it's time to start defining the handle and where the uh, blade starts. So I'm just using this uh, inch thick, uh, it's just an inch thick block of mild steel here with a handle on it. Gives, gives a nice crisp step down to, to start the tang or the handle. So of course that looks pretty short, and it is pretty short, but it's still fairly thick, so that's plenty of material to draw out. And of course I like to do a tapered tang on, on my forged blades most of the time. So we'll, we'll go ahead and draw that out and uh, get plenty of material, or plenty of length for the handle there. Just defining the contour or the profile of the handle a little bit here. Clean it up just a bit. I like to give myself uh, enough material to grind back from the forged profile. So this is just a rough representation of what the blade's going to look like after it's cleaned up on the grinder. Let's go ahead and heat it up and put it in the insulated blanket, let it cool down. It's just a uh, sort of a quasi anneal, just enough to get some holes through the tang. And of course, it'll relieve any stress in the steel. We're going to we're going to normalize it later, so I'm not really worried about that part of it. Get this profile cleaned up here, and of course checking, keeping an eye out for any kind of D-lambs at this point, and not seeing any, so that's good. I'm going to go ahead and lay out uh, some lines, or scribe some lines, quarter inch off of the outside of the tang, so I can put some uh, pinholes in here. And of course this, this knife, I'm planning to use buffalo horn scale, and I think... Uh, some 3 seconds inch thick nickel silver pins will go real nicely with with the buffalo horn and some in, in the past something I kind of like to do is you know with smaller pins it's you know and it's sort of historical but you uh, you go ahead and put like a multiple pins and they're kind of a pattern almost um, I say historical because I've, I've seen antique you know original knives with similar uh, similar handle work and so that's, it's kind of inspired by that so we're going to have a bunch of pins in this handle and it's going to obviously hold it on there real well but it's going to look really cool too I think
Now, if we get the pinholes chamfered for uh, re removing any stress risers and stuff like that, we'll go ahead and put it in for the normalizing cycle. And this, of course, is followed by multiple heat cycles, uh, thermocycles after this for grain refinement and all that good stuff. Before the last thermocycle, I went ahead and ground, ground things flat. Got everything more or less uh, uniform in thickness. I mean, it's got a, uh, I should say even, because it's got a tapered tang and it's got distal taper to it. So just trying to take any lumps off, that kind of thing. Hey, that's good. Good. What are you doing? Crunching a knife. Alright, so we're out of the quench. It's uh, everything held together just fine. There's no no cracks, no separations, no D lambs. You can already start to see some of the pattern, but I think this is going to look pretty cool on the finished project. So stay tuned for part two coming soon. Thanks, and we'll see you on the next video.